Oh, hello, dear listeners. This is Let's Talk About Myths, baby, and I'm Liv, that woman you listen to sometimes. Well, today, that woman you listen to sometimes is here to tell you about a myth you all have been asking me about for mm, a comfortable two years. Yeah, like the entire time I've been doing this podcast. We get it, guys. You like queer stories, and that's awesome, and I'm sorry it's taken me so long. But if I did all the good and famous stories up top, then what would keep you tuning in for more? Today's version of this myth comes partially from my beloved Ovid and partially from a collection of other sources, which again, I'll recognize the website Theoi for, in this case, succinctly laying out a number of versions and their sources. In any event, it's finally here, this oh-so-sought-after story. And that's because it's June. Happy Pride Month, nerds. So, without further ado, I won't keep you from the characters you've been intrigued by for so long. Mini-Myth, When Apollo Met Hyacinthus, A Frisbee Tragedy Our story begins with Phoebus Apollo, Apollo as we'll call him, god of music, prophecy, plague. Apollo's sexuality, I think more than most, if not all of the other gods, is fluid. He loves who he loves, and while he often causes the deaths of those he loves, he loves them all the same. And here and now, Apollo loves a man named Hyacinthus, a beautiful youth whose looks and charm have left Apollo completely and utterly smitten. Ovid tells us that Apollo loves Hyacinthus more than he loved any other. Apollo loves Hyacinthus so much that he stops paying attention to anything else. Apollo loves Hyacinthus so much he leaves his beloved temple of Delphi without its prophetic god. Now, that's saying something. The oracle of Delphi is Apollo's thing. But even it is not enough to pull Apollo away right now. Apollo fucking loves Hyacinthus. He's devoted. Truly, madly, deeply. Hyacinthus is a prince of Sparta, a grandson of Lacedaemon, the founder of Sparta himself. And Apollo stays with him on the banks of the river Eurota and the mountains of the Peloponnese. And there, in Sparta, they bask in their love. Or, as Ovid describes, at noon one day, Apollo and Hyacinthus strip off their clothes Now naked, Apollo and Hyacinthus anoint each other with olive oil, rubbing in the ancient moisturizer into each other's smooth skin. And then, all naked and rubbed down with oil, they decide to have a contest for who can throw a discus further. Yeah, basically ancient frisbee, but naked and oily. But there's something else you should know. This is not just a story about two men of Greek mythology and their love. No, it's also a story of jealousy. You see, Apollo is not the only god in love with Hyacinthus. No, the man must be seriously hot and charming because he has not one, but two gods vying for his affections. The west wind Zephyrus is also taken with Hyacinthus. He too finds himself in love with this sexy Spartan. Okay, back to the naked and oily boys who are about to play a round of sexy, naked, and oily discus. I'll remind you, Apollo and Hyacinthus have just stripped down naked and rubbed each other down with olive oil, with the only logical next step being a competition for who can throw a discus farther. Or, you know, maybe it's all a metaphor for the hot sex they probably had before the discus throwing began. But Ovid isn't just going to describe sex here, especially between two men. That would be frowned upon. Still... He also isn't hiding it. His telling of the story goes from describing, in detail, Apollo's, quote, flame of love, to describing, in detail, the naked oil rubbing plan to throw discuses together. So take from that what you will. But I can tell you, I'm assuming that in between discus, there was definitely some awesome sex. Once, I imagine, they've finished having this great sex, it's time to throw the discus. Apollo throws first, and he's a god after all, so his throw is stellar. 
The discus flies high into the air. Hyacinth is excited. He's eager to show his own skill. And so he runs toward where the discus is flying. But Zephyrus has been watching. Zephyrus has been watching and he's a jealous, messy bitch. He blows his west wind at the discus as it flies through the air, and he blows it off course. He blows it at Hyacinthus, and tragically, awfully, it hits Hyacinthus in the head, and he falls motionless to the ground. Apollo rushes toward the lifeless body of Hyacinthus. He's as pale as the beautiful boy on the ground, and grieving as Achilles did for Patroclus. <sighs> Patroclus. Apollo picks up Hyacinthus in his arms, trying to warm his body to stop the blood flowing from the wound in the boy's head. He uses what he knows, which, as the god of medicine, is a lot, but nothing works. It's too late. Hyacinthus is dead. You know the gods. If they can't have what they want, no one will. It's really lovely and definitely healthy and not at all troubling. Apollo, holding tightly to the body of Hyacinthus, cries out, He blames himself, his own hand having thrown the discus that ended his lover's life. But deep down, he knows it's not his fault, that they were simply playing a game with terrible, tragic results. He asks, in Ovid's beautiful, stunning telling, quote, Can having loved be called a fault? Apollo chases after Zephyrus, pursuing him into the mountains as he shoots arrows at the wind god, but it's no use. The damage has been done, so Apollo quickly gives up his desire for revenge and returns to mourn over his love, Hyacinthus. Apollo wishes he could die with Hyacinthus, that he could pay for what he's done with his own life, that Hyacinthus was worthy of that. But no, he must accept the laws of fate have only taken Hyacinthus. And that's because he's immortal and Apollo's a god. But Apollo should have thought of that in the first place. But he says... He'll always have Hyacinthus in his heart. He'll always be able to speak his name. Apollo determines that all the music he plays on his lyre and all the songs he sings will celebrate Hyacinthus. As he says this, as Apollo cries over the beautiful body of Hyacinthus, mourning this man he loved so much, the blood that had spilled from Hyacinthus's head transforms on the ground beneath them. It's no longer blood-stained grass, but deep purple flowers. But even these stunning flowers are not enough for Apollo. And so onto the petals, he inscribes the words, I, I, the sound of a tragic cry, the sound he made when his beloved Hyacinthus died before his eyes. Before you go thinking this is the first Hyacinth, though, let me tell you that it's something called a larkspur flower, which is Hyacinth in Greek, but not what we consider Hyacinths in English, which are my favorite because they smell so fucking good. Just, you know, to be really confusing about it. Oh, wonderful listeners, that's the story of Apollo and Hyacinthus. A tragic story, but one of the few queer love stories of ancient Greek mythology, so an important one, however tragic. As usual, would greatly appreciate it if you would rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. You know, the whole jam really helps me. I'll also be posting on my website very soon a list I have worked out with a local independent bookstore. I'm so excited that I've been able to do this. Basically, so many of you have asked me about supporting me by buying me books so I can work on the podcast, which is so wonderful and helpful. The thing is, is that the best way... I should say the easiest way to do that is through Amazon. However, I will not purchase books from Amazon. They are single-handedly devaluing the written word by selling books at a loss just so that they can have the cheapest books in the land. And then everybody thinks books are worth that, but they can't make books for that price. Anyway, it's a whole thing. Don't buy books from Amazon. So instead, I have worked with a local independent bookstore here, Monroe's Books, one of Canada's most famous and wonderful bookstores. And they have worked it out for me so that I can create a list just like Amazon has. You all can go, you'll be able to view that list, see if you want to purchase any books for me. It'll all be facilitated online and you just put a little instruction in there that they're to be picked up by me personally. And then 
I get the books. You get to donate via wonderful things I can read and help me make the podcast the best that it can be. And we can all do it without supporting Amazon. So anyway, that's to be posted soon. I'll let you all know when it's up. Thank you all for listening. You're the best. I'll be back next week. I'm Liv and I do love this shit.